30 year old female patient driving a car about 45 miles an hour who was T-boned while crossing an intersection by a car who did not stop at the red light. Patient was unrestrained with no airbag deployment. Patient complains of hitting her head on the driver's side window and left shoulder pain, left knee pain, and left upper quadrant pain. Patient is awake and talking to, to us, but is very anxious and is in full C-spine and spinal immobilization at this time. We'll be there in 30 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to activate the trauma team. I'm gonna don my PPE and um, I'm gonna get equipment set up. So for this, I would um, make sure that I have level one tubing in case she's hypotensive. Um, I would get just like my trauma supplies, like chest tubes and um, suture trays and everything that I need. Okay. Okay. So the patient arrives. Yep. I'm gonna do my across the room observation um, and kind of consider if there's any uncontrolled hemorrhage that would make it CABC instead of ABC. There's only some some bleeding from a laceration to her left forehead, but it's controlled. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to just jump right into my airway. So because she's in a C-spine, um, I'm going to open her airway. Well, first I'm going to just see if she's alive. Hi, ma'am. Can you tell me your name? Cindy. Okay. So her airway is intact. All right, Cindy, we're going to look inside your mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. So because she's in a C-spine, if I needed to open her airway, I would use the modified jaw thrust. Can we open your mouth? Mm -hmm. And I don't see any signs of obstruction, any loose teeth, any vomitus or blood. Um, she sounds like she's moving pretty good air. Um, and she's able to maintain her airway. So we're gonna keep all of her C-spine immobilization ongoing and move down to breathing. Um, is there anything yeah. that I'm missing? Nope. No. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna assess her, just inspect first her breathing rate, resp her respiration rate, her pattern, um, her effort. Okay, her, the rate is 28 and it's sh shallow and you just, it doesn't look like one side is moving as well as the other side. She's complaining of pain when she breathes. Okay, um, so I'm gonna look for if her trachea is midline, you said that her chest is asymmetric and not moving Correct. Um, symmetrically. So I'm gonna listen for breath sounds. I don't have my stethoscope, but I'm listening for breath sounds. Okay, um, you cannot hear breath sounds on the left side and okay. um, the right side you can hear breath sounds. Okay, so because of the asymmetric chest wall movement, the JVD and the lack of breath sounds, I'm gonna be concerned about a uh, tension pneumo. So I'm going to stop there at my life threat and I'm going to intervene with a needle decompression. So I would get all my supplies for that. We would decompress her on the affected side, on the left side. Um, and when I hear an air gush, I know that it was effective. And then we would set up for a chest tube. Um, I also, because she was having shallow breathing and pain when she breathes, I'd be concerned about other additional rib fractures and or pulmonary injuries um, and because of her respiratory issue I want to make sure she has oxygen so I put her on an arm rebreather at 100% and then just reassess put her on a SpO2 and capnography to make sure it's effective okay SpO2 was 90% and capnography was 40 okay um, after or before the needle? Yep. That would be before the needle decompression. Or shoot. I Sorry. That and, and will you, you just know, put the I, oxygen on? I, so, I, yeah, yeah. That's okay. So now it's after a, a couple seconds with the oxygen on. The, it's improved. Yep, it's improved. SpO2 is 99%. Okay. Um, so now that her airway and breathing feels sta more stabilized, we can move on to circulation. So I'm going to assess her pulses, I would assess her carotid pulse for central perfusion, I would assess her radial pulses bilaterally for peripheral perfusion, um, skin color, temperature, cap refill, and just general level of consciousness. So um, her pulses bilaterally are strong and regular, and 
her um, level of consciousness, she's awake and she has some amnesia of the event. Okay. Um, Skin was cool, slightly moist. Okay. So because her only external bleeding that we notice is the head and it's already stabilized upon arrival and it, she's got good pulses, I'm going to move on to um, just intervention to circulation and start two large four IVs start warm crystalloid, crystalloid solution, uh, blood tubing, um, and draw my trauma labs and my type and screen while I am doing that. Um, because she's only mildly tachycardic and doesn't look super shocky, I might just start off with a 500cc bolus and then see how she responds to that. Um, but we'll kind of reassess as we're doing vitals later on. So now I'll move on to disability and assess my Glasgow Coma Scale pupils and movement. So. Um, I'd assess her eye opening, her verbal response, and motor. So the Glasgow, um, how did you score those mm -hmm. for each one? So she's already awake and alert, so she gets full points for eye opening. Because she's confused and has amnesia, she'll lose one for verbal, and then um, she looks like she's moving all her extremities well, but we'll assess that um, right now. So. Can I have you move your arm, both your arms for me? And can you move both of your legs for me? And then she has pain with her left extremity when she's moving, um, so we'll assess that later on with the extremities, but okay. she's able to move spontaneously. Perfect. Then we move on to E and we expose her, so we'll take all of her clothes off. We'll look for any other external signs of injury or hemorrhage. Um, because if we're concerned for a head injury with the mechanism, we will wait to log roll her until later on. Um, but I see that she's got abrasions on her knee and abrasions on her shoulder and some concern for a shoulder deformity from the T-bone injury. So we'll continue to assess that later on. Um, and then before we move on, we have to make sure that we prevent hypothermia. So we'll cover in warm blankets. We'll turn up the heat in the trauma room and we'll just continue to infuse warm fluids. And now we can move on to adjuncts. So um, we would want to make sure we do a chest x-ray to confirm placement of the chest tube after that's placed, which we can place that now if the team is ready to prep the patient. Um, a chest x-ray will also show us any rib fractures. We want to do um, a fast exam because she has left upper quadrant pain and um, an EKG just because of the thoracic trauma that caused the pneumo. And then after the chest tube's placed, we'll want to make sure we're looking at initial output, place addressing on there as well. And then I'd want to make sure that we just prep for a CT of the head because of a concern for a brain injury. So after that, we can move on to the secondary survey. So now is when I get my full set of vitals. Blood pressure 110 over 65, heart rate of 100, rests of 20, temp 98.7, and the revised trauma score is 12. And the trauma score is because her respirations are between 10 and 29, her systolic is above 89, and her Glasgow is normal, 14, almost normal. So now I can ask her a history. So I would go through the sample, um, symptoms, allergies, medications, past medical history, last PO, Tdap, menstrual, and events leading up to the crash. Okay, so do you have any symptoms right now, ma'am? My head hurts and I have pain in my shoulder and when I breathe. Okay, what about any allergies to medicine? Nothing. What about any current medications that you're on? Birth control. Okay, and do you have any past medical history? I hurt my left shoulder a long time ago and I don't have an appendix. Okay, and when was the last time you ate or drank? I had breakfast this morning with a cocoa pie. Okay, and when was your last tetanus? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and your last menstrual period? Um, last week. Okay. And do you remember what happened today? Uh, no, I think I got into a car accident when I came home from brunch in the noises. Okay, perfect. Um, and where are you having pain right now, you said? My left shoulder. And when you're breathing? And when I breathe too. What is it out of 10? I would say it's a six. Okay. So 
I would have the physician put in orders for pain medicine and I'd apply ice to her knee because it looks like there's only superficial injuries there for pain control. Um, reassess after we give the medicine and we can move on to the head to toe. Okay, so I would need you to hold C-spine while I take off the collar and examine her head. So I'll just pretend that someone's holding it. So I take off one, I'll wait, I'll look at her head first, but make sure that the C-spine's fully immobilized. Um, I'm looking for any bruises, lax, abrasions to the face, any drainage from her ears, any trauma to her mouth. Um, I have her open her mouth and look to make sure the jaw is aligning and closing properly. And then I would palpate for any crepitus, deformities, or pain. Did we find anything on that? Um, the laceration to the left side of the forehead, the bleeding is controlled in the blood, dressing is intact. Mm -hmm. There's no drainage from ears um, or any deformities noted. Okay. Um, so now I'll move on to her neck. We'll take the C collar off. I'll have someone hold C spine and I'll inspect for any edema, any deformities, make sure the trachea looks midline, and then palpate again for step offs, tenderness, any crepitus. Okay, um, she does have a little tenderness uh, to the C-spine upon exam. No other abnormalities noted. Okay, um, so then I can move on to the chest. So we know that she had a left tension pneumo, so the chest tube's in place, but we'll continue to look for any other um, obvious deformity. She previously had asymmetry, but that's improved because of the needle decompression. We'll look for any other bruising, contusions, lax, abrasions and then palpate for additional tenderness. There's some crepitus noted in the left lateral chest. Mm -hmm. um, the, the chest tube output is 100 cc's. There's tenderness to the left ribs upon palpation and um, the, the lung sounds um, are, in, are um, somewhat improved. You don't hear the resonating anymore. Okay. S1, so, S2 within normal limits. Yeah, so I listen to her heart and lungs. Um, and we'll just move on to abdomen then. So um, we'll inspect her abdomen, look for distension, any um, bruising, contusions, lax, any like seatbelt sign. Um, and then I'll actually auscultate first and listen to vowel sounds. And then after that, I'll palpate and just look for any tenderness. No signs of injury, no tenderness. You did hear active bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Okay. Um, we'll move down to the pelvis, the pelvic region. I'll look for blood at the urinary meatus and any signs of um, like deformities, any um, bruising, contusions, obvious bleeding. Um, so I'll inspect first and then after I'll palpate. So on inspection, are we looking at anything abnormal? There's no abnormalities. Okay, and then I'll um, palpate her iliac crest and her symphysis pubis and make sure that she doesn't have any pain on exam. Nothing noted. Okay, and I don't think that we need to place a urinary catheter, but I would place it here if I needed to. And then we will move on to the extremity. So I'll look bilateral arms and legs for any abrasions, contusions, swelling, deformities, tenderness. Um, on the left, Obviously, she has a potential shoulder injury and a history of injuries in the past, so I have a higher suspicion for like a dislocation or some type of um, musculoskeletal trauma on the left. But she's got good pulses and good CMS, so I'm not concerned about anything that we need to stop and fix right now. And then we know that she's got um, the abrasion and pain on her left knee, but I would go down and assess all of her arms on both sides. I check pulses. <laughs> um, and then I would have her do the push pull. So can you pull me towards you as best you can? Push me away. Do you feel me touching you here? Yes. And up here? Yes. Okay. And then we'll do the same. Do you have pain when I press on your knee? On my left knee. Okay. Are you able to bend it at all? A little off. Okay. What about this one? Good. Do you feel me touching you here? Yes. And then she's got good fetal pulses too. Um, I think, any, unless there's anything abnormal, we can move on. Nothing. Okay, so then we'll look um, at her back. So we need to get extra hands to do C-spine immobilization and full spinal uh, immobilization and log roll her. 
So we can just pretend that we're doing that and then we'll plot the backboard at that time and just look at our back. Do you know if we do that? Um, no, but just talk about it. Okay, what, what so when we roll for? her, um, I'm gonna just palpate down her back after I just do a quick inspection and look for any signs of injury, bruising, contusions, deformities. And then when I palpate, I'm just asking her if she has any tenderness and looking for any step offs or deformities there. And at that time, I'll just look and make sure she doesn't have any incontinence or any like obvious injury in her right side. Okay, no abnormal, uh, any abnormalities noted. Okay, and then throughout all of that, we were looking at the skin. So the only like abnormalities with skin and soft tissue were the abrasions to the knee and the lack to her head. Um, the last, one of the last things we'll do is just the neuro exam. So I'll assess her pupils to make sure that they're equal and reactive. That's assessing her um, ocular, motor, ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve. And then um, I'll ask her how many fingers am I holding up? Two. That's assessing her optic nerve. Can you follow my finger? Good. So that's assessing her tro trochlear and adducent cranial nerve. And then can you raise your eyebrows? Can you stick out your tongue? Uh, Perfect. And that's assessing her facial nerve. Okay. And then we'll just kind of do a review of injuries quick. So she had the left tension navel that was needle decompressing out the chest tube. We're going to do CTs to confirm if she has any C spine injuries since she had tenderness. Um, and then we'll do some x-rays of her shoulder and of her knee to see if there's any injuries there. Um, then we'll continue to monitor her vitals. We'll continue to do neuro exams to make sure that her contusion doesn't get worse so she doesn't have any other changes. Monitor her chest tube, um, output, lung sounds, all of that. And um, we'll just continue to monitor her left upper extremity and left lower extremity for sensation, circulation, um, good pulses, any worsening swelling. Um, and then for interventions, we'd have to do a wound washout for her lack and repair that, update her tetanus, um, and then just do all the imaging that I just said. And then I would probably consult neurosurgery just in case she does have a head injury. We'll have to see what the CT show. And then um, orthopedics for her ortho injuries and then depending on what's going on with the tension pneumo and how it's improving, maybe even like thoracic surgery. And then depending on our CTs, we might have to admit her to ICU, but I think at least a step down admission is probably warranted. All right, very good. Good job.